all very much for coming to listen to my message today, especially on such a beautiful day outside. Um, my name is Susan Rawlings, and I will be talking about the reality of the UFO and extraterrestrial presence and the possibility of government disclosure of the truth that we are not alone in this universe. And you know, this is the first time I'm thinking that I can probably even say this um, publicly, is that I feel that we are in the thick of this right now. Whether uh, the President of the United States or another world leader actually comes forward and says, we are not alone in the universe and it acknowledges it officially. We are in the thick of it because of so much going on in the news. Um, sightings are up, I think, seven to eight hundred percent globally. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have known but it, or noticed, but it's all over the news. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, so, so not only will I be talking today about the reality of the UFO presence and the extraterrestrial reality, I'll be talking about the latest uh, what's going on in the news about this subject and I'll also be talking about what's been going on historically about this subject and the truth is of the matter is this is absolutely nothing new. So um, the Vatican is even acknowledging this publicly now. I don't know if you guys have, have come across that in the news, but for the last two years, representatives from the Vatican have been acknowledging the extraterrestrial presence publicly, and that is huge. That is telling me that we are in the midst of disclosure of the truth that we're not alone in the universe. Um, usually I start off my presentation with showing a clip of what was called the Disclosure Project, and the Disclosure Project was a meeting that was held back in May of 2001, and it was at the Washington uh, National Press Club, Washington, D.C., and it was held by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Stephen Greer, who I've met personally and spent time with, and I believe him to be a very credible man. Um, what Dr. Greer did was he gathered several credible witnesses who had military background. Some of them were pilots. Some of them were even involved in covert uh, black budget operation projects that involved extraterrestrial technology. But all of these people with credible backgrounds came forward and testified publicly about their interaction and their knowledge of the extraterrestrial presence. Some of them had even been involved in UFO crash sites where there were bodies involved and they talked publicly about it and that really got the ball rolling for uh, the public awareness about this and it seems as though the United States really seems to be the only one holding out <laughs> about this. There's so much secrecy and so much cover up in the United States about this. Um, but recently we had another disclosure meeting at the Washington Press Club. This was uh, actually September 27th of last month and it was held by Robert Hastings. You guys can Google both of those videos. Google video and I'll try to remember to post the links on my website if you want to just have a click on um, and along with my presentation so you can see the footage. But um, what was unique about Robert Hastings um, Press Club interviews with witnesses who had been involved with extraterrestrial technology and interactions with the UFOs was that most of these men um, were involved on a military level and they were witnesses to UFOs coming in and interfering with nuclear weapons, completely shutting them down, completely shutting off nuclear testing. And so this is telling me that if, 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 this, if they wanted to harm us, they wouldn't be inter I mean they could they have the technology to do they, they're so far advanced than we are and if they have the ability to shut down nuclear testing and take it completely offline and to interfere with it they could have harmed us by now if they wanted to and in the first disclosure project of all of the witnesses there were 400 at the time not all 400 were able to speak at, of course at the press club but since then there have been thousands of witnesses who have come forward uh, through the disclosure projects and talked openly about it and of all of the witnesses not one of them has talked about this being a threat to humanity and I believe that um, there's no more worthy conversation that we could be having right now in light of the Gulf oil disaster that we recently had it's not so much in the news anymore because it's not I mean the damage has already been done but it's apparently under control um, but we have not needed to be dependent on fossil fuels or oil uh, for our transportation, for our source of energy for decades now. There has been technology that exists 
that would allow us to be pretty much completely free of using oil as a, as a source of energy and, and the dependence on it. So these kinds of disasters did not need to happen. It did not need to happen. And some of this technology is extraterrestrial based. It's free energy based. And, and this technology has really been available to us for decades now, but it's been suppressed. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And that's probably part of the reason why the extraterrestrial presence is being suppressed as well because these beings that are so much more spiritually advanced than we are and technologically advanced than we are they have the capability to completely help us change our world and we have to be responsible in part for those changes also we can't completely look to them for it but they do have the technology that can greatly assist humanity and help assist with pollution cleanup and stop the destruction of our planet and so it is crucial that the truth be known and if it's not going to come from a world leader or the president of the United States it has to be responsible uh, we as a human race have to be responsible for making the change and embracing the contact and that's why I do these talks I feel that we're at a crossroads where humanity is coming to a place where we're much we're, we're becoming more spiritually enlightened I don't know if you guys are experiencing this, but I'm seeing this all around me. I'm seeing people becoming much more psychically aware, much more sensitive, much more spiritual. I'm a professional psychic medium. That's what I do for my living day in and day out, and I've done it for many years. And I've seen in the last few years an amazing change in the people who come through my doors. I'm seeing people who are much, we're, we're on a much more conservative path that are opening up and they're not getting their answers from their traditional resources. And so they're seeking out more. They're not getting it from their religious institutions. And they're seeking out more information because they're opening up all over the place. And I'm just seeing almost like a mass awakening everywhere. And it's so beautiful to watch. So we are in a, an incredible time. This is an incredible time to be alive on this planet. And we're in the midst of major changes. Yes, we're feeling some of the growing pains economically. And, but I think that if we can just hold our belts through and get through this, that we will just have a world to look forward to that we can't even imagine right now and in such a beautiful way. Um, a lot of people ask me how I got involved in such a unique uh, study, uh, area of study with the UFOs and extraterrestrials. It actually started um, probably early on with my Christian upbringing. My parents brought me up in a very strict Christian environment, and I'm grateful to my parents that they gave me that spiritual foundation to build upon. Um, but I felt very frustrated at an early age. I felt like I was not getting all the answers and that I was not getting the, the my questions weren't being answered. Even as a young person, I would ask questions, and my teachers would just look at me like, <laughs> you know, and so I felt really frustrated. And when I left home at an early age, I started uh, very much on my metaphysical path, really in my, probably when I was about 20 years old. And I started developing my intuitive skills and um, my psychic abilities. And then that led into the mediumship part of the work that I do. And the psychic abilities are a little bit different than the mediumship. Um, the psychic abilities is more like moving around in space and time and travel to gather information to give it back to the person you're reading for to help them in their life so that they can go into the past and gather information of may what may be things that are holding them back and then bringing it into the, the future so that they can unfold and find their spiritual path and find why they're here. And so that's kind of moving around in space and time to gather information. But the mediumship part is a little different. That's where we're tuning into the subtle frequencies of other worlds that vibrate all around us that we can't see. It's like turning the knob on the radio, turning the dial, and being able to tune into the subtle frequencies and picking up um, frequencies of loved ones who have crossed over that want to give messages to the person that we're reading for or angels or spirit guides and what I began to find out and no one really ever told me this was going to happen is I started getting communications and and frequencies that were coming in to commu communicate with me and I can see them a lot of times when I'm I'm uh, picking up these energies I can see them psychically in my mind and I was getting um, 
pr uh, intelligent life coming in and, and communicating with me telepathically and psychically that were not of human origin. Some of them looked very human, but there was something so different about them. Some of them were so much more spiritually evolved so balanced in their emotions and so loving and some of them were so innocent almost childlike and you know very small even in their structures others were so intelligent and almost like the bringers of knowledge to humanity and I came to know this as extraterrestrial presence and that's really the way it works that's how they communicate with us and so that led me on the path to wanting to understand as much as I possibly could about what this was about. I had no idea what I was getting into in <laughs> all of the years of research that, it, that I would you know, spend doing, but I wouldn't change a thing. I would not change a thing. And I have been watching this now for many years really unfold, and I think that we're coming into a time, I think we really are in the middle of, of disclosure of the truth, because it's all over the news. The sightings are up so, so high, seven to eight hundred percent globally. And they all, for the most part, seem to be um, coming in with a peaceful intent. Now, I do acknowledge that there have been some people who have had, um, well, maybe more frightening experiences that I've come to know and I've talked with. And in the more abduction scenario, there, the, we've got the abduction scenario and then we have the contactee scenario. Abduction is where people feel like they've been taken against their will. And the contactee is more of a free will uh, exchange of energy between the two. Um, some of the people that were very furious about their abduction experiences in the beginning have actually come to a, a very beautiful and peaceful place with it. And many of these people, even if they do feel that they've had a frightening experience, because we as human beings, when we come in, into contact with something that we don't understand or something that's foreign to us, we immediately kind of go into a fight or flight response. And it's just part of the human nature. A lot of times these beings, they sense our fear and they don't want us to be afraid, so they will back off. Um, but many of these people, abductees and contactees, regardless of how they feel about their experience, have come, walked away from the experience with incredible gifts. Um, heightened psychic abilities, um, abilities to heal, musical abilities, um, abilities uh, that have to do with advanced technology that can actually be invented and applied where they had no scientific knowledge before. Some of them are even coming back speaking extraterrestrial languages. I have a clip in my um, presentation that shows a girl who speaks several extraterrestrial languages and she's very credible. She's from Australia and it, it's just it's amazing to listen to her. So uh, please get a chance if, if, if you can um, to, to have a look at that. But because of what I do as a living as a, as a psychic medium, I go forward into the future just about every day <laughs> except for on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> except for today on Saturday and Sunday or this weekend. But um, I don't see all this gloom and doom. I mean, I acknowledge that we're in the process of some growing pains, but I see beautiful things unfolding, and I feel that this is um, embracing the extraterrestrial presence is a part of our evolution, and it's inevitable. I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what disclosure of the truth will mean to humanity, where this will take us. Um, I believe it will take us to a movement towards more world peace and spiritual evolution. Um, I believe that advanced technology that already exists that can eliminate our dependency <laughs> upon fossil fuel will be released finally. Um, I believe that there, when we go into these spiritual upgrades, we, our psychic abilities are heightened. Our abilities to telepath, which is my thought to your thought, and we can communicate that way with no words being spoken. I believe that human beings are becoming more telepathic. And when, we're, when we engage in our telepathic abilities, Abilities, there are no language barriers and imagine where we would be in this world if we did not have any language barriers that is huge uh, language barriers are a huge problem on this planet and I believe that that's a system that could allow us to move past that I mean we're not not there yet obviously but I think that that would be coming into play um, I also believe that um, uh, space travel advances in space travel obviously would would be uh, uh, available to us and also I believe that there would be a lot of reform and in corrupt institutions and leadership that no longer serve this planet I believe it would be reformed so again um, 
this is something I, I believe that we would want to embrace. And UFO activity is obviously, as you've heard me talk uh, just in these few minutes, UFO and extraterrestrial presence, it's obviously just so much more than about strange objects in the sky. <laughs> um, there's a very serious spiritual, um, religious, military, technological, and even political standpoint that accompanies this reality. And so if we start to break this down, um, I do have to address a little bit of the corruption, but I'm not going to focus on it um, because we want to get to the better things. But um, it's obvious some of the corruption going on in leadership around us. We can't deny it any longer. Um, but when we look at the, the UFO and extraterrestrial presence from a, like a political and a military standpoint, anything that is sharing airspace that is unidentified is considered a threat to national security. And so our good people that are defending our country are doing their job. And, and these UFOs, a lot of them are being targeted aggressively. And it's because it's considered a matter of national security. And it's a threat to defense. And so our military people are just doing their job. They're defending our country. They're defending our safety. Um, and that, so I, I'm thinking with, in the military standpoint, we probably can't uh, look at this in a, in a way that hum, uh, people outside of the military can because they have a job to do. And so it's probably more for people like you and I who are here in this room to be embracing this um, because we don't have to defend our country. We can embrace this communication openly. Um, also too, we talked about the, the recent disclosure project with Robert Hastings where the UFOs were interfering with nuclear testing and nuclear weapons. And so that again goes into the threat to national security. Um, when we look at this from an economic standpoint, anything that is considered a threat to the economy is considered a threat to the national security. And so anything that would be free energy based is considered a threat to the economy. Therefore, it goes into a threat to national security. So we get the cat kind of chasing the tail. And, um, Former Defense Minister Paul Hellyer, um, he's in his 80s now. He's a huge disclosure advocate. I got the chance to meet him a few years back at a conference. And he talks, he goes around in his 80s all over the world and talks to people about the threat of, uh, the threat of uh, this technology being released to humanity of free energy, that it's ridiculous that it would be a threat to the economy versus a threat to national, or along with a threat to national security, because um, it could be released slowly, you know, over 10, 20, 30 years, and time to, to clean up the planet and not, you know, not have to keep the destruction going on. And he was real serious when he talked to us here in the United States. He, he was very adamant, especially about, you know, talking to the United States citizens. He said, You people here in the United States, have to start addressing your political leaders and pressuring them about disclosing the truth because the United States only seems to be the last ones holding out. Um, if the United States government doesn't do it, there's a possibility that either Canada, China, or Russia may do it. I can't say for sure how it's going to happen, but uh, there's a strong possibility that another country may step in and do it um, if the United States doesn't do it. I actually just found in the news, I, I'm updating these presentations. You usually up to the very last minute because there's so much coming out in the news. Um, but there was an article uh, published on September the 29th that a space ambassador uh, was appointed to, uh, by the United Nations to act as the first point of contact for extraterrestrials to trying to communicate with Earth. That just came out <laughs> about a week ago and that was just in the news. So like I said, it's happening all around us. Now when we look at disclosure from a religious standpoint, and thank you so much for holding this microphone, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, when we look at this from a religious standpoint and some of the cover-up um, that's been involved on a religious level, and when I talk about religion, I'm not bashing any church, I'm not bashing any religion. Um, I want to make that clear. But um, these people involved in religious institutions, and I, I kind of have to single out the Vatican because the Vatican, to my understanding, the Vatican Library has the largest resource of, of UFO and extraterrestrial information known to man. <laughs> and it's probably why they're coming forward and speaking about this now because they know it's inevitable. Um, but 
these religious institutions know that if human beings were to have the knowledge of these more uh, spiritually and technologically advanced beings, that they run the fear of losing their power. And, you know, I, I just don't believe that that would happen. It, it could happen on some levels. I believe that there would probably have to be some kind of a religious reform going on. But we as human beings have to be responsible in that also. Probably not you people here in the room that are open-minded enough to come and listen to a talk like this. But in a lot of ways, human beings have allowed, humanity has allowed religion to divide us. And I think that we're coming into a more spiritual existence where we're allowing the spirituality to bring us together. So these institutions may have to change a bit to get up with the times, <laughs> but um, I believe that there would be reform in, in that as well. That you know, and, and I believe that people would be embracing this because they would be be becoming more spiritually spiritually aware. Um, so. Those are some of the things that, um, when we look at this uh, from a, a cover-up standpoint, those are some of the things that we're looking at. But um, let's talk a little bit about the history and the fact that this is nothing new. UFO and extraterrestrial presence has really been, it's been recorded since the beginning of time, pretty much in every culture if you know where to look and if you can keep an open mind in the interpretations. Um, Hubble Space Telescope website estimates that there are hundreds of billions of planets in the universe with the possibility of each galaxy containing millions if not billions of planets. Recently with the new camera, Hubble Space Telescope has observed 3,000 visible galaxies. NASA is releasing reports of the discovery of thousands of planets in our galaxy and so it is no surprise that uh, our history is rich with extraterrestrial presence, uh, off-world intelligent life that's been interacting. And I recently, uh, yeah, just September 29th, here we go again. <laughs> the last week of September was big in the news. Um, but uh, astronomers, there was a, an article released uh, from some notable astronomers that they have found a new habitable planet um, in our galaxy. And they say wherever you find wherever you find water, you expect to find life. This new planet is called Galice, I believe it's pronounced. But that was just in the news in our galaxy, ha new habitable planet that's been found. So it's all over the place. Um, but getting back into um, oh, real quickly, I usually show a clip from NASA at this point in time of a huge UFO. This is straight from NASA, footage straight from the NASA website of a huge UFO hovering right over the space station. It's huge. I mean, you can't even, it's just unbelievable. Um, but when we go back into religious scripture and religious texts, there are indications in the Bible. Uh, the whole entire book of Ezekiel, I believe, could be interpreted as a UFO experience. Um, and there are several others to follow if you really, uh, if you really dig deep and keep, keep an open mind with the interpretations. Hindu scriptures, the Vedic scriptures, um, they, there's mention of UFO and, and extraterrestrial activity all over the place in, in the, those scriptures that predate the Bible. Um, we have thousands of clay tablets that have uh, been uh, found in the Mesop Mesopotamia area that have been translated by a man named Zechariah Sitchin. I highly recommend that if you want to research this for yourself, and I encourage all of you to research this yourself and not just take what I'm saying at face value because it's fascinating when you really start to get into your own research. But um, Zechariah Sitchin translated these Sumerian tablets that talk about uh, interaction with extraterrestrial race during that period in, in history, in humanity's history. Um, old biblical artwork, and I usually show pictures, but I'll post those on my website. Um, show, uh, back from the 14th century, show pictures of the Madonna and child, a hovering UFO craft right over her head, and an onlooker in the back <laughs> emphasizing, look up at this, okay? Um, the crucifixion of, of Jesus Christ, there's artwork showing UFO craft on either side of the cross as, uh, during his crucifixion, with what looked to be humanoids inside. Um, the baptism of Christ, there's an artwork that shows a huge flying saucer shining down on the baptism of Christ. And 
it just makes me wonder with some of our most spiritual leaders and our teachers who have been on this planet it just makes me wonder this is might sound a little out there to some of you guys but it just makes me wonder if they are from here Jesus Christ was quoted quoted in the Bible saying I am not of this earth it just makes me wonder um, so you know some of the artwork it just makes me wonder with these artists what did they know then that we've lost now <laughs> what did they know you know or maybe their interpretations were different um, the Vedic scriptures, back to those, they talk of at least 400,000 human-like races living on various planets. And um, there was the discovery of the artificial structures on Mars that really uh, are very close to the structures on the Giza Plateau in, in Egypt, the Great Pyramid structures. Um, investigate those. And that's in, in pointing to intelligent life that's been on Mars at one point in time. The Native Americans speak openly of their knowledge and interactions with the people from the stars, or star beings as they call them, or our star ancestors. Um, some of the Lakota, to my understanding, are now even sharing their star maps with NASA. Yeah. Um, so those are just a few things. Here in Ohio, at the Great Serpent Mound, there have, in, in Marion, Ohio, there have been remains, uh, skeletal remains unearthed that uh, are an indication of a giant human race, uh, seven, eight, nine foot tall people. And I'm believing some of, them ha some of the gi uh, giant skeletal remains, I'm not sure if they're the ones associated with Marion and the Serpent Mound, they have double rows of teeth. <laughs> So it's showing that there's definitely something different going on here. Um, so we've already talked about um, the extraterrestrial vehicles and the interference with the nuclear weapons, but extraterrestrial vehicles and the UFOs did become very prominent again when human beings started using nuclear power. So I, I believe that that's something they're advising us to get away from. And they can interfere, to my understanding, they can interfere um, when these nuclear uh, weapons can affect their worlds. Other than that, they really can't interfere with our free will. Um, so some of the reasons that they may be visiting, um, just a, a, a few of the ideas that I have. Um, I don't believe that we'll be going through another calamity on this planet, but some researchers really believe that preserving humanity and all of life on the Earth in the event of a calamity could be part of the reason that they're visiting. I don't believe that will happen, but some researchers do. Um, there's also helping uh, other civilizations whose species may be endangered and dying, and that may be where some of the abduction scenarios come in. Um, monitoring the damage done on the planet, observation, study, and learning purposes. And I've also met a gentleman, his name's Charles Hall, and you can Google him and watch his entire presentation that he gave at the X conference a few years ago. Um, but he talked about a race that the United United States government knows about that has a base out in Nevada in Area 53. Uh, Charles was based, uh, it's been years ago, but he was based as a weather observer out in Area 53 in Nevada. It's an extension of Area 51. We probably all know about Area 51 out here. Um, if not, do your research into it. But um, Charles had an interaction with a race called the Tall Whites the entire time that he was out there. And when he came to his assignment in Area 53, he uh, couldn't understand why all his uh, fellow co-workers were sitting in the barracks making up the weather reports. <laughs> and so what he come to find out was that um, they were, these guys were afraid to death to go out into the desert because they were encountering these tall whites as they would come in. They would have to acclimate themselves to the Earth's atmosphere and they would be walking around in the desert at night. And so these guys were going into that fight or flight response and scared to death when we're encountered with something that we, we don't understand or that we don't know, and people were getting hurt. Um, one of the uh, tall white, they call them the tall whites, but one of the extraterrestrial ch children was assaulted and, and the mother retaliated and someone almost got killed. But it was because the, this man was scared and he, uh, he hurt the child. He, just, it was just one, he wasn't intentionally trying to hurt someone, it was just that, that fight or flight response that we go into. And so Charles was assigned uh, after that incident by the United States government and military to be the only weather observer that would interact with these beings. And he talks about the interactions that he had with them for two years. And I met Charles, and he is the kindest man 
to ever talk to, and I believe him to be very honest. And you can watch his entire UFO or the presentation from the X conference. Just Google Charles Hall X conference and listen to his story, and I think you'll find it fascinating. Um, but also a few other reasons that they may be um, visiting us is that um, there, are, there are some researchers such as Zachariah Sitchin who I talked about earlier who translated the tablets that were found from Mesopotamia area. Some of the researchers believe that extraterrestrials had a hand in creating and or genetically modifying human beings and that could be the reason that they're monitoring us. Um, also again assisting uh, humanity in, in, in their spiritual evolution. And so those are just a few of the reasons um, that they may be um, visiting us. So let's just talk about, if we've already talked about a few things in the news, but let's just go back to the Vatican. And uh, the chief astronomer, for, or the Vatican's uh, chief astronomer, uh, he's the director of the Vatican Observatory. They have an observatory out on Mount Graham in Arizona. It's on an Indian reservation. There's also one um, in Italy. But um, Jose Gabriel Funes, in an article that was published in a Vatican publication uh, spoke of extraterrestrials being our brothers. And this was published a few years back. And um, in my opinion, I can't say for sure, but in my opinion, I believe that he probably would have had to have permission from the Pope to talk about something so controversial. Um, but he talked in this article of extraterrestrials being our brothers and that believing that the universe may contain alien life does not contradict a faith in God because aliens would still be part of God's creation. And he even went on to say that they could even be free from original sin remaining in full friendship with the Creator. That's pretty powerful coming from the Vatican. Um, Back in November of last year, uh, Funes was back in the news. There was a conference that was hosted. Um, it was a five-day conference that gathered 30 astronomers, physicists, biologists, and other experts. And the group included scientists. Uh, some of them were Catholic, some of them were non-Catholic. Uh, some of them were from the United States, France, Britain, uh, Switzerland, Italy, Chile. Um, but the entire conference was to discuss extraterrestrial life. Okay, so it's happening all around us as we can see this unfolding. Um, I, I, I'm really pleased to see that they're not taking that they that they are taking a more benevolent approach to this. Um, I always find these these little tidbits of research really funny that I find <laughs> as I go along the way. This is a little off topic, but um, I was taking I was studying an astrotheology class and. Um, I, I came across Michael Desarian, he's one of my favorite researchers, and he was talking about the word Vatican coming from the Latin word Vaticanus, which actually means place of the sorcerers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had to laugh at that. It's like everything that's been condemned over the years, they really are behind the scenes. So my friend Christopher and I, we got out the Latin dictionary off his bookshelf and we looked it up and it was a little bit different of a meaning, but I trust Michael's research. So I just that was hilarious. Um, it's my understanding that extraterrestrials believe in a divine creator and uh, although they are more spiritually advanced than we are, uh, they are all also in the process of finding their way closer to the divine just as we are. Um, in my research that I've done, actually when I show the disclosure clip there's a gentleman on there, his name's Sergeant Clifford Stone and you, you do a Google search on him. This man spent 22 years in the United States military and he was part of an elite team that was, would be rapidly dispatched to UFO crash sites. And he was one of the uh, witnesses that testified in the Disclosure Project. And Sergeant Stone, when he talks about his experiences, he gets very emotional. I mean, you can, tell, you can feel the truth coming from this man. Um, but he talked about when he was involved in the military that the United States um, military and government was aware of at least 50 extraterrestrial races that had been interacting with humanity. It's probably more by now. But what was really interesting about what Clifford Stone had to say was that many of these races appeared just as human as you and I. 
<laughs> they could be sitting right next to you in a room and you would never be able to tell the difference. There are ways to tell the difference. Um, I can talk about those if we have time. Let me just check the time. Yeah, we'll try to get to that. Um, I just have a few more minutes, but um, there are ways that you can tell, but he talked about that just driving the people in the military crazy. <laughs> that they could literally be sitting right next to you and you would never know it. And I believe that there are some that are walking amongst us. I've had validation, it's only been just a few times, but I have had a few people who have come to me where I've thought in my mind to telepath and because I sense something different. A lot of times the energy fields are different. A lot of times the presence from these people, it, they just emanate so much kindness and love. It's just so different. Um, a lot of them are more based in their heart area and so their heart areas are more prominent I can see the energy fields of human beings so you can just tell a difference and you can know and I've asked for acknowledgement and I've gotten it and it's it's pretty profound and if you guys ever suspect another way you can tell is in the eyes there's something about the eyes but if you ever feel that you're in the presence of someone who is otherworldly do a telepath and in your mind and ask them to give you a sign and be specific about it because when you actually get the sign <laughs> It can be very overwhelming and they don't want, they can sense our fear and they are so kind and compassionate towards human beings that they don't want us to be in a sense of fear and they'll back off on the communication or the acknowledgement and that happened to me once. I, I couldn't believe I went into that reaction. My heart went down into my stomach and <laughs> then everything changed but it was still a, a wonderful experience. But. Um, Several countries are releasing their UFO files for public viewing. That's been going on for a few years now. Um, another strong indication uh, of disclosure, there was a, re well, a lot of the astronauts, former astronauts are coming forward and speaking about the reality of extraterrestrial presence. Uh, Edgar Mitchell, who is a huge disclosure advocate, has been talking publicly about this really for years, but a few years ago he did a radio interview that all of a sudden got all of this attention globally. I mean, he couldn't believe it. He's like, I've been talking about this stuff for years. And um, he said in this interview that there is other life in the universe, um, that we've been visited, and this has been covered up. Um, there's a lot of contact going on. The Roswell UFO crash of 1947 was real, and that it was covered up. And he said, again, extraterrestrial intent is not hostile. It's not hostile. Um, Let's see. Oh, in uh, July of this year, there was an airport in China that was shut down for about four hours. I have a picture of it in my, uh, in my presentation that I'll post on my website. Um, but the whole entire airport was shut down uh, because there was a huge UFO hovering over it and they had to reroute flights and everything. And to my understanding, yeah, seriously, and to my understanding, um, I think there was another incident that just happened a couple weeks ago. I've, I've got to get, get my research on that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there was an incident that happened again in China just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, those are just a few things that are really showing me that we're headed towards this process. Um, the UFO activity in Mexico City is unbelievable. I show a lot of footage of that, so get, if you get a chance, check it out. Um, it's, it's so prominent there that people really don't even, even think anything of it anymore, but thousands of fleets flying in formation, some of them almost flying in formations that appear to be giving messages. Flying in airspace, there's never been an accident, there's never been a problem with sharing the airspace there. Um, Gosh, we've got signs in the sky and we've got signs on the ground. Crop circles are another phenomenon that we need to look at. Um, there appear to be messages. all over. Now, some of the crop circles are hoaxes, but I believe that there are a lot of them that are real. Some of these circles are giving us timing, uh, astrological timing. They're giving us sacred symbols. They're actually giving us even messages in binary code. Uh, there's one that I show in my presentation that uh, gives a complete message in binary code about um, really needing to be aware, humanity being aware, and there's an extraterrestrial face right beside it. There's messages shown in barcode. 
So we really need to pay attention to these things. Um, it appears that some of the sacred sites, um, especially in Mexico, almost appear to be activated. And I show a clip in my presentation of that. But there seem to be light spheres either coming down or coming up out of this, the pyramid structures in Mexico. So it's almost like these places are being activated. And there's just something much larger at hand going on here. Um, Let's see what else. Well, I, I just really quickly, uh, before we run out of time, um, it, it was a few years back, my husband and I, we went to a training. It was called the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And that's a, uh, a, a program that's headed up by Dr. Stephen Greer, who was the, the Disclosure Project guy. And he took a group of probably about 30 of us. We spent a week up at his house. and. He, he taught us how to interact in, in vector spacecraft. For, we were out sometimes till 3 o'clock in the morning. And let me tell you, it was the most humbling experience I have ever had in my life. There were things that came out of the sky that I cannot put words to. No one was scared. No one was threatened. People would even fall asleep because it was 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> We'd be falling asleep under the stars. And people, right before something would happen, people would get telepathic messages in their head to wake up and look over their shoulder at the direction that the activity would be coming in. It was absolutely amazing. And so they want us to interact with them. And when we, when we put the call out there, they do respond. Um, it's really just setting the intent of peaceful communication. And I'm telling you guys, watch the skies. Watch the skies. Set your intent to do this and watch what happens. Watch the people around you who start to come to interact. It's absolutely amazing. Um, we've got to talk about conscious, consciousness really quick because I believe that human beings, like I said earlier, we're coming, to an evolutionary, we're coming through an evolutionary process. And this involves consciousness. And each of us carries within us a universal communicator called conscious awareness. And although we are separate and individual, we all have the same light of consciousness. And this is almost bringing us back to being one again. Um, it's really important to understand the nature of consciousness. Consciousness is the quality or state of being aware, um, especially of something within yourself. Consciousness is truly what we are beyond our physical body. And I, I just recently, this happened, well, I gave this talk at the Great Serpent Mound over Labor Day weekend. I've been at the Serpent Mound several times, but I've never spent the entire day there. And let me tell you, a week later, I had the most incredible experience. It was a complete out-of-body awareness that happened to me. I've never had this happen before. I did not need eyes to, to see. I did not need ears to hear. I was able to travel at vast speeds. And there was that part of me that was still connected to my physical self and was in my thinking self and thought, this is not possible. I could even see the fluidity of my soul around me. And I got into that thinking self and then snapped right back into my body. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to move, have another one of those and be able to move through it appropriately without going into the fear of this is not possible. But I think that we're all awakening to this, this higher part of ourself. And consciousness transcends time and space, just like what I talked about. It's not bound by a place or time. It's present everywhere all of the time. It's the core of our being, and it's truly what we are. And that makes us absolutely limitless. I've actually felt, since I had that experience, coming back into my physical body so limited. It's almost been frustrating. Um, but I know that I have the ability to reproduce that again. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take an awfully long time. But we're developing our telepathy. We're developing our intuitive skills. Um, even remote viewing. Um, a friend of mine who is a, a meditator, a dedicated meditator every day, is starting to have partial levitation experiences during her meditations. It's amazing. Yeah, and so telekinesis, bilocation, um, astral, out-of-body experiences, we're all awakening to these. And it's, it is. It's like we're getting an upgrade. So um, I just... Uh, 
I, I'm going to just, uh, hopefully we'll have time for a few questions or comments that if anyone has any, we've got a few minutes. Um, I'd just like to announce, I am, uh, I, I've got all of my information, uh, it's down there. If you want, so that you can go to have my website information, you can just come and get it from me. Or I'm in booth 512 if you want to stop by my booth. Um, so that you can look at the uh, presentation on my website. But um, I'm also, I will start not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, I'm starting a psychic development class that runs for six weeks. And if you need more information, you can go to my website. Next Saturday, I'm teaching a tarot card interpretation class all day where I teach people to read the tarot and give readings. And uh, uh, several of my students are reading professionally now. So I invite you to come to the classes if you choose to do so. And I'd like to thank all of you for coming and listening to this message. I apologize about the technical difficulties, um, but I will post the uh, presentation on my website.